Thanks to Trend Micro for sponsoring a portion of this video. We went for what seemed like years without really any new like Apple computers. And then all of a sudden, it seems like Tim Cook comes out here and just salt bays new computers seemingly every month. And as somebody who makes their living on Apple computers, I'm using a lot of apps on said Apple computers. I also wanted to share my favorite, most useful Mac apps that I use, whether or not you're on Apple Silicon or whether you're on Intel. Let me tell you about it. When Mac OS has a new feature, it's usually not long where somebody figures out how to make it better and make it more convenient. Meet Night Owl, and the best part, it's totally free. So Apple gave us the ability to dynamically switch from light mode to dark mode, either through you know, doing it manually or selecting it uh, automatically through Mac OS. Night Owl takes that same concept and just gives you a ton more control here. So a few things. Uh, Night Owl will let you select the exact time your Mac will switch from light mode to dark mode, as opposed to you know, the sun deciding it for you. You also get more control over what apps are affected by light and dark mode. If you've got dark mode selected, you can actually add like light mode to certain apps. You just like that look up better. If you're dark mode obsessed, or you just want more control over your, your modes, Night Owl is your jam. This one I think is generally pretty cool. So uh, it's called Dropover. And if you're like me, you're doing a lot of transferring from one folder to another, things like saving photos, text, and trying to compile everything ultimately to go in just one folder or dock. Uh, this app's gonna allow you to create, they call it a drop space, to temporarily put anything. So you can transfer it all in just one easy motion. No more eight or 10 windows all open at once, trying to put different finder windows so you can see where things are. It just makes it really easy to copy everything over. All you do is choose a file, text or photo you wanna copy, wiggle your mouse or cursor, and a drop folder is gonna pop up, throw it and anything else you want in there and then transfer all at once when you're ready to go. Uh, and again, best part, totally free. For this one, I'm gonna thank uh, SnazzyQ himself, Quinn, but really I just stole this from his video and it was so good and so useful. I think everybody should know about it. Uh, and I think it makes sense that I stole it because it's called Cheat Cheat and it does exactly what it sounds like it does. Uh, it gives you a cheat sheet for pretty much any program you're using. So it goes like this, after you install it, you just need to hold down the command key for a few seconds. An entire hotkey page is gonna pop up for every single hotkey that worked with that program. Uh, editors are gonna find this super helpful. So when you find the hotkey you wanna use, you don't even need to memorize it or input it. You just click on it and it runs. Crazy simple, crazy useful, uh, and it works for pretty much any program too. So I've been using this one for a little bit, and this is one of those like simple apps that I'm gonna be downloading on every single new Mac that I get, and a new Mac I set up for anybody else. So, Quinn, thank you for that one. So, I think we all pretty much know Instagram has still decided to not make a dedicated app for the iPad or Mac OS. Granted, using the browser version works fine on Mac, especially since you can post from there now too. I prefer though having a dedicated app for things like that. So, and that's where Grids comes in handy. It's an awesome Instagram app with a really clean look with a few caveats. So there's a free version, which lets you browse, like, and comment on your feed, as well as other pages. But if you wanna do things like watch or post stories, or watch or post reels, or even direct message, you're gonna require the subscription version. And that's gonna be either 250 per month, 13 bucks a year, they will give you a seven day free trial. The main reason I use it over the browser is I can see notifications from Instagram right on my desktop. If I had it on my browser, I would get notifications for it. Again, you can use a browser if you want, but if you like the full kind of Instagram shebang, it's an awesome option to have. A shout out to my minimalist fans out there. Uh, I've got an app for you. So this one's called Hidden Me. There's a free and a pro version. So difference being if you run multiple monitors, you might want the pro version, but single screen users, the free version works great. So all it does with one click, it hides all your files, folders, or apps on your desktop. If you're one of the people, my dad, it drives me nuts. His desktop is just like a billion icons. And if you share your screen a lot, if you don't want others to sort of see, say that sensitive folder uh, you have on your desktop, no one's gonna believe that it's a taxes folder, just, just so you know. So a bit more niche use, and one of the ways that we use it, if you're filming screens all the time, you don't wanna always you know, hide your desktop, this is an awesome way to, to do that. So uh, speaking of sort of niche creator problems, probably one of the worst feelings is spending all day filming a project. You get your A-roll, hours of B-roll, audio, everything all on one drive or SD card. 
Load onto your computer and find that everything or some files are corrupted. So meet Distril that has saved my butt more than a few times as well as my sanity. And if you watch the Apple Circle, it saved Robert too on several uh, projects. Caveat here, it's not cheap. It is 40 bucks. Uh, but what that 40 bucks sort of gets you, uh, I think is priceless. The program will not only repair your corrupted files, but also can recover deleted and formatted files for those times where you may have accidentally erased a whole drive, which sounds crazy, uh, but it happens. So I've only had to use this a handful of times and it's one that I hope you never have to use, but it's one that I am infinitely grateful to have. Like I said, it saved me a ton of times on this channel and other channels that JFL uh, works with. It's awesome. If you lose stuff, you're worried about stuff, it's an app you absolutely have to download. This next app is from this video sponsor, Trend Micro. This is Trend Micro's premium security suite. Instead of needing to download multiple apps or programs to try to protect yourself online in pretty much every way possible, Trend Micro's premium security suite is your one stop for all of that protection. The world is legitimately a scary place, like globally, uh, but more locally, it's scary people trying to get access to your information, your credit card information, trying to steal your passwords. People are trying to come at you from all places. And this isn't just like antivirus software. It also has a VPN, ID protection from dark web, mobile protection, a password manager that I use all the time, and a ton, ton more. Anything from the world of sort of internet protection, they've got you covered. Whether you are on iOS, whether you're on Android, whether you're on Chrome OS, whether you're on Mac OS, uh, there's a suite of apps that were made right for you. If this sounds like something that you want to try, and you probably should, Trend Micro is giving you 10% off. We'll put the link down below, but use the code John10. Photoshop was king of the castle uh, for so long, but for a lot of people, generally myself included, uh, Photoshop is intimidating to use and also pretty expensive. If you're in that camp, ladies and gentlemen, meet Pixelmator Pro. Uh, no subscription necessary. It is a one-time payment of like about 40 bucks, but the interface is just way easier to learn. Now, typically you might hear someone recommend a program like Affinity Photo as replacement for Photoshop. And I agree with that. Uh, in fact, in the latest Mac app video that I did, I recommended that. And it's a true one-to-one -one Photoshop replacement in a lot of ways. However, the reason why I'm here talking about Pixelmator Pro this time around, they feel like it's open to more people and get into it a lot easier. The barriers to entry are just lower. It's like a combo of Lightroom and Photoshop. Gives you granular control over your images and projects without giving you sort of seemingly 50 different brush options and tools that sort of, as you're learning, are just really overwhelming. Think of it as giving you all the tools most people would use in Lightroom and Photoshop, but with like Lightroom's mobile ease of use uh, with the tools and menus. This is quick and simple, but really useful. So it's called Guestimer, and it's a really elegant timer app for your Mac. Install it, little timer icon that lives on your menu bar, click it, drag it down, set a timer. The longer you drag it down, the longer the timer's set for. Really simple. Once set though, you can make a note for what that timer was for. Uh, my days are basically run on like 15 minute increments, all on a calendar, and I stick to it. I'm telling you, if I didn't write it down or set a reminder for myself about something, I would not remember it. And Guessimer is a really nice and simple little reminder app for those sort of momentary things and I have to set a quick reminder to use, you know? Remind me in 15 minutes to drink some water. Remind me in 15 minutes I got a meeting, whatever it might be, it's really helpful to have and it's, it's saved my butt more than a few times. So if you are downloading all of these apps and your menu bar is starting to look, uh, let's say beefy, especially if you've got one of your MacBook Pros with a notch, the easy way to clean that up is a free app called Vanilla. I'm actually gonna add a little arrow to your menu bar when you click it. It can hide app icons from the menu bar too. Uh, it's easy to use. You see this little dot. And if you hold command and drag any icon you want hidden to the left of that little dot, when you hit the arrow, it will hide those icons from view until you hit that arrow again. This might sound familiar. It's similar to an app called Bartender, uh, but this version's free. So Bartender's great too, but this costs money. So if you wanna go the free route, give it a shot. So I saved this one for last, not because I use it the least, um, but perhaps because I use it the most. Uh, you might've heard of it, but um, it's called Alfred. So I try to keep things pretty minimal where I can. Uh, and I think seasoned Mac users know that Spotlight is one of the best ways to navigate and find apps on your files or computer. 
but it's always limited to what's actually on your computer. With Alfred, it gives you that same functionality as Spotlight. Um, you can search your computer, obviously, for anything that you type in, but you can also search online with it as well. And it lets you use sort of the power of Spotlight. Do any search you want from, from Google, YouTube, Amazon, uh, whatever. Uh, it also learns how you use search on your Mac over time, bringing up sort of more useful results for you to use later. There's a ton of customization here, so play with it, figure out how you can get it the best for you. I use it all the time, and I don't know how I could use my Mac without it. Those are some of the apps that I'm using. Maybe you've heard of some of them, maybe you haven't, but I'm sure that that is not an exhaustive list. So if there's like a killer app that you guys absolutely love, let me know what it is. Leave it in the comments down below. Let's talk about it. And I'll update this list. I'll make a new video every six months as new apps kind of come out. Um, but hopefully one or two of these or more, you guys will find as useful as I do.